here we are. We've got a tan that we're getting ready to preserve, or I should say it's in the middle of being preserved, this one. Um, this is the sort of the outcome that you want. Uh, this is what we're going to go for with this next one. Only um, where those holes are, that's where the bullet exited and maybe where it entered. So you might want to stitch those up before you tan or um, dry out your hide because uh, if you stitch them up they won't be big gaping holes because as the, sh the hide shrinks it just gets bigger sort of uh, opens up so if you stitch them shut then they'll they'll dry shut and you won't see them you can always cut around it too is another option so they're not there or you can just leave them it's whatever you choose to do so I'm going to show you how to do this um, I've got another ring as you can see set up on the outside this is for a the one that we're going to do. It's a little bit bigger, uh, sorry, a little bit bigger, so we want to stretch it out a little bit more so we get more of it stretched instead of uh, an overlap like we have with this one. So what we've done is, uh, as you can see, the, the overlap on the legs, how they sort of get pulled around, and with a bigger ring, you don't have so much of that. So that's sort of the idea of it. But this is the first one I've ever done. I've done coon skins, but I've never done deer, and it's the first deer skin I've done. And I've got all the fat and sinew off the skin. This is just the skin. It's sort of still drying, so there's still a tad bit wet sections, and then you got dry section. And uh, you just salt the shit out of it. Um, what I did with this one was put a coating of ammonia on it first. Just poured a one but uh, about a liter, or just under a liter of it. Probably 750 milliliters of. Uh, of um, ammonia and I just pour that all over the hide to keep the bugs off it and then I just coat it with salt. Um, I'm going to do the next, the one that for the video without ammonia to see sort of the, the results, see if it's the same or if it doesn't work as well um, I would recommend the ammonia but I want to see if I can do it without ammonia and just with salt. Um, I've been told salt just works alone and uh, you can get by without the ammonia. The ammonia just sort of keep, helps keep the bugs off it. If you're doing this in a colder temperature, you don't need to worry so much. Um, but because it's a little warmer right now, uh, we just coated it all with salt and uh, I did use a bit of ammonia. So when this is actually dry, I'm going to brush all that salt off and it'll be a, a decent hide and that keeps the fur on it. This is just raw hide. This is not tanning, okay? Don't mistake this for tanning. If this leather gets wet, um, or sorry, it's not even leather, if, if this stuff gets wet, it will rot. It, this is only good for dry. You can make wall hangings and stuff like this, this method, or you could just preserve it before you tan it. Um, and this is a good way to keep it, and it will last for pretty much ever as long as it doesn't get wet. So I'm going to show you guys how to make this. Now, I know it's kind of dark and it's hard to see, but in there I've got my tan. It's soaking in salt water right now, uh, hot salt water. And the reason for that is my tan was in the freezer and I'm trying to... Sorry, it's not a tan. I keep calling it a tan. The, um, the hide is was in, in the freezer, so um, I'm trying to thaw it out so I can scrape it and then salt it and dry it out. So... Um, if you get a fresh hide, you can skip this process, but if you've kept it in the freezer and freezing it, I highly recommend soaking it in hot salt water. The salt water just keeps it a little bit more preserved, and also, the more salt you get on this hide, the faster you're going to tan it. Er, correction, the faster you're going to dry it out. So, um, salt water is better than just regular water, and it'll also help keep bugs off it as well. So, um... Yeah, this will probably sit in here for another hour, and once it's um, thawed out, I'll show you what we're going to Alright, so, start off with the hide. We flipped it over, so fur is down, of course. And, see there's this meaty stuff that's still attached to it, and we want to cut that away. That's the first thing. And, uh... Just throw these on the ground for the birds. And um, that's pretty much what I'm going to work on. And when we get this section cleared out, we're going to salt it. Um, you can use either coarse salt, which is also called pickling salt, or you can use kosher salt or just regular table salt. But I warn you, you're going to need a lot of it. 
So get the cheapest one that you can get if cost is an issue. So what you do is you just basically pull on it and you cut it free from the, uh, the skin. If you can pull it off, that works too. And that's what you want to do is you want to strip it. You can also scrape your knife and get it off as much as you can that way. Um, but the trick is to get as much of it off as you can and you want to get right down to just the skin. The more meat you have left on this and sinew and stuff, the more it's going to rot and smell. Uh, you just want the skin. You don't want anything else. So, ow. That's why you gotta cut it away. So I'm just gonna work on this for a bit. All right. So as you see, I got some progress done. Got a section of it relatively skinned. I got all the big chunks of meat off it. And I still got a bit to do. I'm still working. And uh, what I find works well is just cut a real light slit. You don't want to cut through your your skin, but you want to cut your, your meat in strips. And it makes it a little easier for peeling it out. So, and then you just pull it along like so. that and you can pull down try not to cut yourself I've already cut myself and it's not very good to do that but anyhow and then you can see you can just rip it off in chunks and it I mean it's a bit of a chore but it does come off and it leaves you with just a skin pretty much and it works pretty good um, I need to get myself some started here I keep putting the knife right where I'm going to uh, poke myself with it Yeah, it's a messy job, but it will give you a good result in the end. Ooh. Okay, so there's a send you section. That off. Without cutting the skin. And as you can see it's pretty gross, but anyways. It's only flesh. <laughs> I'm going to continue on, and when I get this all skinned off, this one hole right that's right here, I will stitch shut, and we're going to be stretching it after we uh, salt it. But anyways, I'll show you the next process when we get there. Okay, so, took a little bit of time, but we pretty much got it peeled. So, get the meat out of here. Flop that down. And as you can see, almost all the meat's gone. Um, let me see if I can get this bit cleared. Right there. Ew. And, sorry. So now we're going to salt this thing. So I'll go grab the salt 
and we're going to pour a whole bunch of salt on it and rub it in and we let it dry and after that's done we're going to scrape it and more of this fat stuff will come off and um, th that'll be tomorrow and then uh, we're going to beat the shit out of it basically and then stretch it so that'll be the next stage so like I said um, we got it all cleared and we can use what we're going to use today is just uh, coarse salt it's the same thing as pickling salt and the reason I'm using coarse salt for this is that it's quite wet and we want to soak up a lot of water so it's bigger than the uh, table salt therefore should suck up more so spread that out you want to open up as much of it as you can so you get as much salt exposed on to the inside as possible and what we have here is actually a opened leg which huh odd i think this one might be the same thing no that one's done right this one was pulled through i think so what we're gonna have to do is cut it with scissors right along there just to open it up um, I'll be right back. Okay, so I got scissors. The reason I like scissors instead of a knife is I think you just make a straighter, neater cut. That's all. There we go. So that opens that up. So, I'm going to pull this over. Cover. <laughs> All right, and we're going to coat it with this salt. If you had any major holes that you want to stitch up, now would be the time to do it. Um, <clears throat> I've decided that I'm not really going to worry about them because I cut them out. I was going to stitch up one, I thought, but I thought about it and I'm not going to bother. Um, I need those holes to, uh, to pull it anyway, so it's alright. So you just want to evenly spread your salt on your hide here. I'm going to throw uh, table salt on top of this as well, just to give it a bit of a extra layering. I'm going to fill this tail up. Now I'm going to get some table salt and just coat it with table salt. Alright, this is where this salt is just regular table salt. I'm using both of them. The reason for that is this fine one will fill up the spaces that the coarse one doesn't because this is a really wet hide. So we want it really well salted. Keep these bugs off it is basically the idea. And you're going to 
want a dry sp spot to store this because, of course, the salt is going to soak out the water from the air and it's just going to get more wet unless you have a dry, sunny spot to put it. So that's just something to keep in mind. I'm just going to let this sit for a little bit and then I'm going to uh, probably go ahead and string it up in my in my rack so I can at least hang it up. So I'm going to get ready to do that. I'm rushing it a bit but um, I figure the faster I stretch it probably the better. Um, this is my second one ever doing so let's see how this one works. All right, pretty much ready to stretch this thing. You're gonna need, um, of course, your ring, whatever it's gonna be. And as you can see, I did this one at a good size. I can stretch it within that zone. So what I'm gonna start first with, of course, is the lower section. Then you're gonna do this top section, and then you'll pull the sides out, and you'll see how it's done. Um, Start off with one here. And poke a hole. Push your string through it. want to tie your first one in and you might want to go close to it so in order to make the other one tight because the idea is to get this tight you don't want to flop yet or it's going to dry really really floppy kind of so this, it doesn't really matter what knots to do, just as long as it holds. That's my first one. Second one's going to be right there. I already have a hole, might as well use it. And we're going to tie that right there. So you want enough slack so you don't have any trouble tying it. I can do this both ways. Uh, the way that I did it where it, the legs are overlapping and then you pull your strings across which pulls it tight over it. Or you can do it this way. Um, either way works. So now we're getting over to this side. As you can see, I've got it a little bit loose. So, I'm just going to think about this for a second. I think I've got no choice. I'm going to need to do the overlap method, like I was just talking about. So, I'll pull that like that. And I'm going to... one over. All right. We know that that's going to be more than long enough. I'm 
hinges. I'm untying the, the first one I did. And I'm just going to do this. Because it's not needed. And we're going to pull through our hole. Right here. pull that tight. So what I like to do is just do a little quick little bowl line. Which is also known now as a trucker's hitch. That pulls that tight. tight. So we're going to do two here, pulling it down. Then we're going to work at our top section to try and get that guy's uh, tightened up. So. Get my tools up somewhere where I can work safely. Okay, it got loose. So Now pull that up. So, come around to this side. First one I'm going to do, this one. I've already got a hole. Okay, you don't want to cut your holes too close to the edge or they will rip. Definitely something to keep in mind. right there, so it's perfect. Doing basic thumbnails. Okay, I want to get this side over here more. 
So that side gets pulled. So do this this one next. Just stabbed it in the ground. Made it easy to go through. So, off to the next side. Any of you uh, are familiar with drum making or drum maintenance, the stretch of this is similar to how you do that to make it tight. You go crisscross. that one's getting untied and we're going to go overlapping like we did the legs. Fortunately, uh, my bow is just not big enough to do that and I can't make the bow any bigger or it won't fit to where I want to put it. Um, so we're stuck with the size. Um, if you have a bigger space, then you can always go with a bigger bow. Alright, so... ripped it. That's what you want to avoid doing. So, try it again. Only this time, I'm not going to make it so tight. here, all I can say is that salt really stings the cut. tight enough, because we're going to cinch these two anyway when we're done. So, the next one is this one. You can see we're losing daylight. Okay, 
this one. Alright, so I guess I'll set you guys up here and see that hole. We're just going to stitch that up for, for the video's sake. Um, so I'll just straighten up the camera here so it's a little more level. It's not going to tip over. Okay, so there's two ways. You can either use a safety pin safety pin it or just uh, pins but I'm going to use a stitching to make it more permanent so good way probably a good length be about there and we need a pin because it's leather and it's going to shrink it doesn't really matter if it's a big pin or not I find bigger easier to use it's just simpler to work, easier to get your thread in, and everything. And as you can see, the light level is starting to drop, for it's almost night. So, there. If you don't know how to sew, forget about this. But, and I'm not saying I'm a good sewer, I just can kind of sew. <laughs> and, all you do is we're just going to basic whip stitch this together. Basic whip stitch is just you push it through one end, and you get through the other, uh, and you stitch it. This is almost how you would do stitches in the field as well, if you had to stitch yourself. Yeah, to stitch yourself, I wouldn't recommend using big, massive, honking needle. It's just going to hurt more. As you can see, it's definitely closing up that wound. It's okay if you get a bit of grass in there, it'll dry out and die off and you can pull it out. All that. <coughs> Jesus. You don't want to tangle up your string too badly either, otherwise it'll make a mess.
coarse hair works good as well for stitching. Just some ideas if you're out there and don't have string or thread. Um, I don't know how the deer hair works. I'm sure it's pretty short, so it'd be hard to use. I don't recommend it, but if you can use it, all the power to ya. We're almost ready to tie our knot. So what you do is you pull it through your loop at this point, and that pulls it tight. Break it off, stick your needle where you won't lose it, pull your thread apart, and this is where you just tie it. That'll work. That's all you need to do. It shouldn't pull out. and rip your threads, it should actually hold pretty good. Whoops. Sorry, I lost that cut knot. There it is. Voila. There. And that's that. So there you go. It's stitched. And when you flip that puppy over, You'd never even know it was a hole. Um, here, I'll flip, you'll, you'll see it when I flip it over. But you can't really see. Um, I'm just gonna do my final cinch. I think these two I wanna tie up. I'm just gonna run a string across those two and do a trucker's hitch. That just cinches everything up. Sorry about that. So I'll put a trucker's hitch. This will just snug everything up a little bit tighter. Voila. That's that. And this is a time where you might want to throw a bit more salt on it and hang it up. But uh, I got lots of salt here. Rub it in good. And we're gonna let that hang overnight and for a couple days. But you're gonna need to uh, sort of poke at it and stuff so it doesn't get too stiff. So we'll just flip this up and over. So you can see the stitch. All right. I know the level's bad for light, but point out there, you can see the line right there where the stitching is. Right there. So. Just work that in a bit, but it's pretty much that. Um, I recommend just throwing a bit of salt on the uh, outside of the hide. It's got a bold spot. That's interesting. So, 
there we go anyway. That's how to stretch a hide. And we just got dark. All right. So this is day two, working on our raw hide still. And we're just basically <coughs> scraping off the salt. So it's almost dried. And what we're doing is we're scraping off this big pile of salt and you want to leave just a small layer of it on the hide itself to keep uh, preserving it but the reason you get all this salt off is it's just going to make a mess when it's hanging in your house these flakes fall off so what we're going to leave is just a thin coat of the salt on the hide so Scrape off the salt, what you're doing is you're getting rid of all the fat that's uh, the liquid that was left on this and uh, some of this extra sinewy material uh, just helps remove that stuff. salt you have on it, the less the wasps are attracted. They're more attracted to the slices of meat I cut off last night. But, and then for the other side, you're going to comb it. You're going to comb all the hair so the salt comes off it. And I'll show you the finished product once we're done, what you sort of end up with. You want to pick off all the strands of sinew that you have left. And all that does is leaves you with more skin. Um, the more meat you have on it, the more it's going to rot. You want to get as much of this stuff as, that you can off of it. All right. So I don't know if you saw in the video, I ran out of battery and um, was in the middle of scraping them. So. You scrape off all that, uh, all that salt with uh, the same tool that you use for scraping it and you get it until you just have a very fine coat of salt on it and you leave it at that and you just let them sun, sun tan and stick them in, the, um, in a dry place overnight to dry. If they get wet they're going to mold or get rotten so basically um, want to keep them dry. This is raw hide, it's not tanning, so it's a little bit different. Um, but anyways, you flip them around and you comb out the salt out of the hair. Oops, sorry. So yeah, you, you comb out the salt out of the hair, you just comb the hair and it gets it back into a, a nice coat. As you see, we flip this one around. And we're about to bring these back inside because the day is getting close to done. We probably have about two more hours until until this starts to uh, until it, of course, the sun starts to go down. And uh, you don't want them sitting out overnight because of the dew. So I uh, I bring them in, dry them out, and uh, just keep them dry basically. And if it's a good sunny day like today, you can bring them out and put them in the sun, just get them as dry as possible. Now, the thing about rawhide is that it's um, sort of many uses that can be done, um, but you put in rawhide for storage. This will keep your fur in relatively good condition for quite a long time without ever having to um, worry about it rotting. That's basically it. And then you can tan it later. So at any point these can be tanned, turned into leather or turned into to hides or skins or 
whatever you want. Um, you can also just make a wall hanging out of the rawhide itself and hang that up, which looks quite nice. There's ways of doing that. Of course, this one that we're looking at is a little uneven of a skin, so might not make as great of a wall hanging unless you cut some of that out. This one, however, is pretty symmetrical. That that one would actually make a great wall hanging, and I've even got the tail still on it. So that right there is it's pretty cool. So that's how I uh, make rawhide. Uh, I'm sure there's other ways. Other people have their ways. Um, you can either use ammonia, like I did with this one here or zero ammonia, like I did with the second one. So, I don't know, that's really all I've got to say. Um, really what you want to do is, yeah, salt the shit out of them, and then scrape that salt off. And if you do that, you can't really go wrong. It's, um, it's just getting these things dry. That's the trick. You want to get them out as dry as you can. And, yeah, and I mean, I'm sure there's people who are way better at this than I am. <laughs> I'm don't consider myself good at this, I just do. And um, it's about doing it, not about being a perfectionist. You can always perfect it later. Stuff like that. So, anyways, there you go. Um, I'll just quickly just mention one little thing. This right here is a scar on the deer. Um, this one had sort of a weird growth thing or a big wound that we watched uh, heal over the course of uh, last summer. I think it was last summer. If not, it was the summer before that. And then I ended up taking this deer. I, I thought maybe it was cancer, but it turned out it wasn't. It was just a wound. And uh, that's why that bald patch is there. Sort of just an interesting story of, of this doe. This one here was a doe. And that one there is a buck. So, there you go. That's uh, the basics to making rawhide. So there you go. We got them both hanging. Just hanging from my ceiling. They're in my room. Temperature is about 25 degrees warm, which is warm enough. I mean, that's warmer than most people have it. Um, I like my room a little bit warmer than norm. Um, also, I have a tropical fish that also likes it, so I keep my room warm because of him also. Uh, the, that way I don't have to actually heat the, the water tank. I just heat my house. But anyways, um, that right there is two raw hides that are hanging basically in my living space and they're not too badly in my way so I can live with it. Um, it'd be nice to have a higher, higher ceiling but all within time when I build my addition I'm going to have a very high ceiling for this exact purpose but for now this will do just fine. So there we go. Um, yeah that's pretty much all I can say. I've got them here in my room, they don't smell, which is really nice, because I wouldn't want to live with them if they're going to stink. Um, I can smell a slight scent from the deer hide itself, but it's not atrocious. It doesn't smell like rotten meat. It just smells a little bit like leather, I guess, is the best way to, to say it. Um, but it's not pungent or anything. It's not super strong. It's very subtle. And um, as time goes, that smell will go away. It's just uh, it, it's going to air out and some of the scents and the greases are still drying up, so it's going to give off a bit of an odor, but um, nothing that's unbearable. It doesn't smell like rotten meat like it would if you didn't salt it. So yeah, there you go. Um, don't know what else I can say. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to ask, and hopefully I can answer them. Otherwise, if I don't know, I'll just say I don't know. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, I hope that helps some of you if you're wanting to uh, preserve any hides. I did think I mentioned it, but I'll just mention it in case I didn't. Um, this method works for pretty much any kind of uh, mammal skin. Uh, I'm sure it would work for any kind of skin in general if you want to do reptile skins too. I'm sure it would work. But um, all I've done this on is raccoons before I did it on uh, deer. So but it seems to work just fine. And I would consider this very traditional, a uh, very traditional style of making rawhide. I'm sure there's other ways and lots of different chemicals you can use. This is chemical free, and that's why I like it. Um, I mean, that first hide was done with ammonia. That's the only chemical I used on that one. 
but this bigger one, it was done with no chemicals whatsoever, just salt. And uh, they both turned out, I would say, equally the same. Uh, I don't think one is better than the other. So I would safely say that ammonia isn't actually needed. It just helps keeps the bugs away when you're scraping it. It's a little more pleasurable to work on, despite the smell. So if you don't like the smell of ammonia, you might find it more pleasurable to work on without the ammonia. But if you don't like bugs, it's that trade-off. So that's all. Um, but it, it worked just fine without the ammonia. So there you go. That is rawhide.